Hello friends, this video on NEAT Human Health and Diseases is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 2. Which one of the following fungi contains hallucinogens? Morshella esculenta, Amanita muscuria, uh, Neurospora species, Ustilago species. Okay, now let's quickly uh, discuss a bit about each of these. So our first option is Morshella esculenta. This is the most readily recognized uh, mushroom amongst the edible mushroom uh, it is also known as the sponge moral or the moral mushroom the second one is amanita muscaria this is also known as fly amanita And why is it known? This mushroom is known for its hallucinogenic properties because it has a psychoactive constituent and that constituent is mucimol. So this is a psychoactive constituent that is it affects the mental activity of a person. So this would be our right option because the question asks about the mush uh, that fungi which contains a hallucinogen the third one is neurospora species uh, which which, which uh, comes under the genus uh, ascomycetes and look wise they resemble the nerve cells that is the neurons if you remember the axon part of the neuron and that is why they are called neurospora because they resemble neuron they are very easy to culture they also reproduce very fast and they are often used as a model organism in genetics uh, so ustilago they are smart fungi which are generally parasitic on grasses and it is often used. this is also an edible mushroom and this is used often used as a traditional food in mexico so anyways our correct option is option b which is amanita muscaria Question number three, the cell mediated immunity inside the human body is carried out by T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, thrombocytes, erythrocytes. So cell mediated immunity is carried out by the T cells that is the T lymphocytes. Question number four, Weedle test is carried out to test malaria, diabetes mellitus, HIV, AIDS. Our typhoid fever. So, Weedle test is a confirmatory test for typhoid fever. So, what exactly happens in this test? This is a blood test where a sample of uh, blood of the patient is taken, and during the, this test, indicates the presence of somatic and flagellar agglutinins of Salmonella typhi because typhoid is caused by a bacteria named Salmonella typhi. Right. So the this test is all about finding if this bacteria's presence can be found in the patient's blood serum. So that that's the test all about. So here suspensions of uh, somatic and flagellar antigens are used just to find out the presence of somatic and flagellar agglutinins of Salmonella typhi. Question number five. A patient brought to a hospital with myocardial infarction is normally immediately given penicillin, streptokinase, uh, cyclosporin A or statins. So even before we try to answer the question, let's first understand what is myocardial infarction. So myocardial infarction is often abbreviated as MI and it refers to heart attack. Now, when does MI occur? So, this occurs when the blood flow to the heart gets blocked. Now, this can cause damage to the tissues of the heart. In fact, it can also be life-threatening. Now, in, during such a situation, it is always advised to give streptokinase. Now, what does streptokinase do? Now, streptokinase can activate the human plasminogen. And what is plasminogen? So, the plasminogen activators are... Uh, protein enzymes or proteases that catalyze the activation of plasmin now what exactly happens is so 
so this streptokinase it activates the plasminogen and plasmino plasminogens are nothing but proteases and they activate the plasmin so plasminogen in turn activates plasmin and what does plasmin do so plasmin breaks down fibrin polymers which are formed during blood clotting so it break breaks down fibrin polymers these fibrin polymers are generally formed during blood clotting so the fibrin polymers are broken down into the degeneration products that is fibrin is broken down into fibrin degeneration products so as a result what happens and this process this uh, breaking down of fibrin this process is known as fibrinolysis so basically what is happening here if if the fibrins are broken down that means if fibrinolysis takes place then the blood clot related disorders can be cured because in this case as i said what is happening during uh, myocardial infarction so during mi the blood flow to the heart is getting blocked so that means the blood flow is getting blocked as a result yeah, it is uh, it is like a blood clot related disorder so the blood is getting accumulated in one place it is not able to move smoothly so in this situation if fibrinolysis can take place then what will happen the fibrin polymers which were formed during the blood clotting they will break down to form the degeneration products now who will break down the fibrin into the degeneration products plasmin and who will activate plasmin plasminogen and who will give plasminogen or who will activate plasminogen streptokinase so therefore streptokinase immediately has to be given to a patient uh, who who is suffering with mi question number 6 cirrhosis of liver is caused by the chronic intake of opium alcohol tobacco or cocaine so what is cirrhosis of liver so in this disease uh, there occurs loss of liver cells and irreversible irreversible discoloring of the liver so the color of the liver changes uh, the th there are marks or patches seen on the liver and all these changes which are seen on the liver they are irreversible they cannot be reversed back and one of the primary cause of this cirrhosis is alcohol so some of in fact there could be some other causes also like uh, viral hepatitis b viral hepatitis c they also result in cirrhosis of liver but out of these options alcohol is one of the major reasons now some of the symptoms of cirrhosis of liver are weakness so the patient feels extremely weak loss of appetite yellowing of skin itching and fatigue a feeling of tiredness basically so these are some of the symptoms which are seen in patients suffering with cirrhosis of liver question number 7 which one of the following statements is correct with respect to immunity preformed antibodies need to be injected to treat the bite by a viper snake so do you think uh, this is correct well this is a correct statement that's because uh, during a snake bite what happens the antibodies for the snake bite are not produced inside the body so therefore the antibodies need to be injected from outside into the body so that's what is uh, being told here that preformed antibodies need to be injected to treat the bite by a viper snake so this is the correct option but anyways let's have a look at the other options also the antibodies against smallpox pathogen are produced by t lymphocytes so this is incorrect because b lymphocytes produce antibodies to destroy ant antigens and t lymphocytes stimulate the b lymphocytes to produce antibodies so anyways t lymphocytes never produce antibodies so that that is anyways not true antibodies are protein molecules each of which which has four light chains
well anti if you look at the structure of antibodies they do not have four light chains instead they have two light chains and two heavy chains so this is also not correct so our correct option is a question number 8 anxiety and eating spicy food together in an otherwise normal human body may lead to indigestion jaundice diarrhea or vomiting so the correct option is a that's indigestion because indigestion can often be a sign of like normally indigestion can often be a sign of some underlying problem like maybe there are gall bladder issues because of which indigestion is taking place or there could be ulcers because of which indigestion is taking place so some of the causes for indigestion are uh, emotional problems like stress or anxiety or too much of alcohol intake or too much of smoking eating too much so if you eat more than what uh, your body can digest so when you eat too much then also indigestion can happen uh, if you eat too fast that means if you do not chew your food properly in that case also the bigger food particles in enter inside your body and the process of digestion becomes more tedious so as a result some portion of the food remain indigested similarly if you take too oily or too spicy food that they are also difficult to be digested and therefore indigestion might happen thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you